Hi, this is Wayne Chapin, and this video is how to back up emails and files in Office 365 for free. So when I talk to people about Office 365 and the subject of backups comes up, there's usually two misperceptions that I notice. Number one is that Microsoft backs up all of my emails and files in Office 365, so I'm completely covered. And number two is that Microsoft doesn't back up any of my emails and files in Office 365, and I need to get a third party backup service to get it taken care of. Well, neither of those are right. Because Microsoft uses retention policies, not backups. And retention policies are way better, more modern, and much simpler. Wait till I show you how quick you can set up a backup job in Office 365. So let me ask you this question. Why do we even have backups in the first place? Well, primarily it's to recover deleted files or emails that are either accidentally or intentionally deleted. So with traditional systems, we back up the files with a backup job. In modern systems like Microsoft 365 Enterprise, we retain the files with a policy or a retention policy. So now let's talk about the default retention policy or backups that you get out of the box in Office 365. So with email, it works like this. So we have an inbox. And if, if we delete an email out of the inbox, then that goes into the deleted items subfolder. And if we delete it out of the deleted items subfolder, then it goes into a special recoverable items folder. And it's a subfolder called deletions. And there it will stay available to us to recover from for up to 14 days. And then after 14 days, it'll be permanently removed from Office 365. Now let's talk about files. So with files, we have document library folders, or the shared folders that are inside of SharePoint. So once we delete something out of the document library folders, that goes into a recycle bin. Now SharePoint has first stage and second stage recycle bins. So think of it as your first chance to recover and then your last, last, last chance to recover if something has been deleted. But the total time between the first stage and the second stage recycle bins is 93 days. So you delete something out of a document library folder, it gets deleted, and then it goes into the recycle bin. And whether you're in the first stage or the second stage, the total time uh, before this, the file gets permanently removed from the system is 93 days. Now, I remember the first time I understood this, uh, I got a little bit unnerved by it. I thought, wow, 14 days. Now I understand there's several several cascading steps before we finally get to that 14 days or with the files, you know, with several steps. I got a first stage, second stage recycle bin and then it's, and it's three months, you know, um, but still makes me feel a little uncomfortable. But I would say as an IT pro, generally speaking, uh, this setup, the default out of the box setup covers 90% of the what happened to my files or I clobbered my files or something happened to my files. I need those recovered. It covers 90% of those, but we're not properly protected and we can do so much better. So let me ask about your current backup system. Um, how far back do your current backups go to recover files? I remember when I first started out in IT like 20 years ago, we would have we'd do a full backup and we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we, so we could effectively go back in time five days and that was acceptable back then. I would say these days it's more like a year. So when you set up a proper image-based back and disaster recovery system for a file server, for example, um, you're able to go back in time for up to a year before the backup jobs get dropped off. But we can still do so much better than that. In Office 365, we can do anything we want. Um, I can protect a file for seven years, 10 years, 20 years, forever. So backups are not really protecting the files, they're backing them up. Whereas a retention policy is specifically saying, how long do you want me to protect that file? If it gets deleted, how long do you want me to hold on to it? So a very simple one is a forever retention policy. So let me show you how easy it is to set up a backup in Office 365 with a forever retention policy. In other words, we're saying all the data comes in the organization, emails, files, we're gonna hold on to it forever, even if it gets deleted. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna to go to portal.office.com. I'm going to go into admin, then I'm going to go into the admin centers. I'm going to go to security and compliance, and then I'm going to go into data governance, and then I'm going to go into retention. So right out of the gate, you'll see that there's a bunch of different retention policies that we have here. 
But let me show you how easy it is to set up the first retention policy where you're going to protect everything forever. So I'm going to call this policy uh, email and file backup job. Okay, next. And it says, do you want to retain this content? Yes, for how long? Okay, how about forever? Sounds good. Click next. Um, now, what locations do you want this to apply to? Uh, let's see, exchange email, that sounds good. My SharePoint sites, you bet. OneDrive accounts, yes. Office 365 groups, absolutely. Okay, the rest of this I'm not going to worry about. I'm going to click next. I'm going to create the policy. And there it goes. And there it is. Now I'm going to turn this off real quick because I don't want to turn on. But there it is. There's my email and file backup policy. Uh, and then that's it. So every email and file in the company will be protected regardless if it's deleted or not. We'll always be able to recover it. Now, I don't think that's good data governance. And I'm going to talk about that quickly. Uh, but if you just want to set up a proper full backup full backup for your Office 365 data. That's how you do it right there. You're completely protected now from accidental, intentional, somebody purging data out of mailbox. It doesn't matter. You're going to be able to recover all of that data. So an important point, where do the retained files go when they're deleted? Well, documents get moved into a preservation hold library. It's not visible to the user. <clears throat> it does count against your SharePoint tenant storage quota. So this is why a forever retention policy uh, for everything could be a problem down the road. So if you have 400 gigs of SharePoint storage, for example, and then you have another 100 gigs in your preservation hold library for stuff that's deleted but you're retaining, uh, your total storage used is 500 gigs. And when, then when you go past your tenant quota, uh, SharePoint is $20 per 100 gigabytes. So it's just something to know. I think for most of the companies that we work with, they really could do a forever retention policy. Again, I don't think it's a good data governance, but you could in case somebody gets uncomfortable about the thought of uh, having a proper data governance policy where you the, the data has a lifespan and then it becomes irrelevant and you delete it. But anyway, um, emails get moved into recoverable items subfolders. So uh, that would be the discovery hold subfolder or the purges subfolder, depending on what that user did. Uh, and I won't go into that here, but it's not visible to the user. And that recoverable items folder has its own storage quota and it matches your existing mailbox quota. So when we set companies up with Microsoft 365 Enterprise, they get a 100 gigabyte exchange online mailbox. They also then get a matching 100 gigabyte recoverable items folder where all their retained data goes, which is pretty amazing. And then in addition to that, you have a unlimited archive folder, which is a whole separate subject. And you could also add these pieces of data to your retention policies, Skype for business chats, Microsoft phone system voicemails, Teams chats, and Teams channel messages, if you use those. Now, I don't think of forever retention policy. Uh, well, I think it's a good place to start. And, and if a company doesn't know what they want to do initially, and they get uncomfortable with the idea of having a data lifecycle plan, fine, let's set up a forever retention policy. But good data governance works like this. Your data does have a life cycle. So old emails and files are noise in your company. Everybody complains how junked up their file servers are. Uh, every time we talk to somebody who has had a file server for 15, 20 years, they always talk about what a mess it is. So if you have something that's purging out data, old irrelevant data, then you're going to have a cleaner system. And old irrelevant files and emails take more time to sift through. Um, and how relevant is the sales, marketing, and finance data from seven years ago? Your old forgotten data creates security risks and it also creates legal expense risks. So I, I noticed years ago, uh, the way I do security now is different than the way I do did security back you know, 15, 20 years ago. I remember when I saw that I, I had an item that was going up for deletion and based on my retention policy, and it was just a document that I, I, I haven't seen it in a long, long time, but it had some passwords for a customer that I had a long, long time ago. And I thought, wow, you know, that's the kind of data that just sits there. People forget about, but creates security risk. And also there's the legal risk. Um, most companies out there have not been sued or have to go through an e-discovery where they're in a, a legal dispute and then they have to produce all the information that they have f through files and emails. 
and they would look back and go, geez, you know, we legally didn't have to keep certain data beyond a certain amount of time, and it would have been nice to just get rid of it. Because not only is that data potentially not helping our case, we also have to pay somebody to go through, find the data, categorize it, uh, and potentially then take that over to an attorney. And all that creates a lot of legal expense for a company. So I'm going to say this, a smart and simple data governance plan. Again, if you want to do a forever retention policy, that's a great place to start. And as long as you don't have crazy amounts of data, you should be fine. But down the road, you really should have a, a proper data governance policy. So a smart and simple one would work like this. Contracts, clients, employees, vendors, tax documents, those get a forever retention policy. Those are company records. Uh, but general emails and files have a seven year and then disposed retention policy. In other words, they get deleted. So they are, have a lifespan of seven years. Uh, and then at the end of that, they're just removed from the system. So a pro tip here, dispose all of your data you are legally able to after your compliance requirements are met to protect the security for you, your clients, and your employees. So to be able to have these retention capabilities, these backup features in Office 365, you're going to need Microsoft 365 Enterprise E3 or E5. You can also use Office 365 Enterprise E1, E3, or E5. And as a side note, if you want to be able to set up automated tagging of documents based on words in the documents, like one we have, which I really like, is the fact that any document that has the word signed in the title is automatically tagged with a forever retention policy, just in case somebody missed it or didn't put it in the right place. But you get that with E5. So if any of this makes you think, well, I really would like to have an initial call with Wayne. Look, being a virtual CIO is one of the most fun things I get to do, and it's very energizing. I enjoy it very much. So be happy to have a conversation with you. We're a managed enterprise cloud service provider. We have six gold competencies with Microsoft, and we're a tier one cloud solutions provider with them. We migrate files, phones, and emails, and security into Microsoft 365 Enterprise cloud systems. And our goal is to get you 100% serverless. Let's leave the servers to Microsoft. And if you do need servers, and that does come up, let's get them moved into Microsoft Azure Data Center. We will help you with compliance, data governance, retention, archival policies, and we can help you put together a written information security policy if you need one. And if you do want to do managed services around a cloud-based system, that's our Confident Cloud Advantage. You get unlimited CIO strategy, user help desk, systems remediation, and systems management with us. So if you'd like to set up that call, uh, you can email us support zerillion.com. You can phone us 847-995-9800. Go to our website zerillion.com. There's plenty more you can read up on or go to our YouTube channel and check out more videos there. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. Thanks for watching.